you. But first, please welcome Michelle to the show. <laughs> used to be a day that they used to put a big A on a woman's chest when she walked around and may have done something wrong called adulterer. But hmm, you were married for how long? I was married for about 10 years. 10 years? Yes, and they were 10 very difficult years. When I said I do, it was the biggest mistake of my life. I was very unhappy in my marriage. Um, I had. You addressed this with your husband or your soon to be ex husband multiple times, did you not? You, you addressed this with your I husband. I did. Many, multiple many times. times I went to my husband and I, I told him I was very sad and unhappy and I thought we should work on our marriage. I asked him to go for counseling and he refused. He, How many children do you have? I have two children. Okay. He basically told me that I had the problem, that he was fine with the marriage and I should go fix myself. So I did go into therapy and I spoke with therapists and the problem is marriage is a partnership and I could not do the work alone. I needed him there with me. So after talking to counselors and therapists, trying your best to see if you can work on this, you went and talked to a friend, a girlfriend. Right? I did. I, I spoke with many girlfriends, as women do. We <laughs> talked to each other and we discussed our marital problems, <laughs> our problems with, uh, at the workplace. And my girlfriend said to me, you do not need to be living this unhappily. You do not need to be living with this void. You're young, you're vibrant, you can go out there and meet someone. And that's what I did. But your, but your friend, let's make sure we get this. Your friend did, your friend did say, well, babe, let's go get a lover. I mean, in, in essence, she didn't say divorce your husband. She that's said, correct. go out there. You know what the void is in your relationship. Go fill that void and everything else might be okay. Those words hit you. You were one of these people who believed in the sanctity of marriage. I did. I did believe in the sanctity of marriage and that's why I did seek counseling and mm -hmm. I wanted very much for my marriage to work. I don't think I went into it with the right mindset. I was not in love with my husband, but I did feel that companionship would mm -hmm. outweigh uh, romantic love. Let me tell you something. You do not want to tune out of the show. If you're not fulfilled, you he has no right to do this, blah, blah, blah. All those things that they say to make you think it's okay. But why didn't you not just say, I am done? I didn't have the courage to leave. It takes a tremendous amount of courage to leave your marriage, to say to the world, this, I failed. I have failed in my marriage. But I'm going to tell you, for me and for a lot of other people may say, it takes a lot more courage to stay in that marriage and go sneaking down the street and try to find Dave and Bob and Sarah and... No, no? we had two separate computers, so two separate internet you accounts. You jumped up on the internet. What happened was I was... www.comefindme.com. <laughs> what? what happened was I was extremely lonely and despairing and alone all Sunday afternoon when he was off with his boys doing whatever he did. And I picked up a newspaper. The advice from my sister had been that there are solutions for problems such as yours. And I picked up the no, newspaper. she was saying there's places for you to go to find a man. I picked up the okay. newspaper and there was an ad. And the ad uh, was AshleyMadison.com. And um, I think the, uh, the motto was for marriage, when marriage becomes monotony. And uh, it was for attached people. You could be married or just living with someone. And it looked like the solution to my prayers. And I logged on, and mm -hmm. I took out a guest membership. And as soon as my membership was approved, it was hours, um, I received a message. And I continued to receive messages. A lot of men were talking to you, were they not? They, they were. They were. I was very popular on the website. I received a lot of messages. I think most women are quite popular on the website. What made you decide to take the messages and the chatting and turn it into something that was more <laughs> tangible, more real? I, wa I, went, I went on the website to fulfill a void, so I wasn't going on to just chat. That was never my intent. My intent was to meet someone who could be a stunt double for my husband, who could be there to go out with me to restaurants and to movies. <laughs> what did you call him? A stunt double. A stunt double. And I'm sure there are other women here who need stunt doubles. I like doubles. to tell some girl I'm going out with, hey, baby, I'm not going to be with you now. I'm going to be with your stunt double. <laughs> okay, so you saw you went out. And you met, why did you not, select Not them? at first. It was very hard. Um, I didn't put up a lot of information on the website. I basically just put up uh, statistics. My, my age, my measurements, my weight. And that was it. I was afraid to post a picture. I didn't want to 
fill out any of the um, profile information that would give someone a good handle on who I was. And uh, I still received countless me messages. I couldn't even keep up. And then you got a message from someone by the name of Christopher. Yes. And what happened then? Well, right from the start, I was intrigued because he was very intellectual and he challenged me intellectually. Um, it was now, when you say that, you're talking about you've been chatting now for, once you met him, you chatted for weeks, months? Months. I actually chatted with him for months because you, you don't want to run right out there and, uh, and meet someone. And I did, I did at first because I thought that's what you do. You run out there and have coffee. And it's very time consuming and it, you open yourself up to a lot of disappointment because if you're not really careful in your selection, you'll end up going on a lot of coffee dates. That lead to nothing. And as gratifying as it was, because it was the first time I was getting attention from a male, it still didn't lead me to the place I wanted to be. And I really wanted to be in a fulfilling long-term relationship. So you're carrying on these conversations. You're getting more and more involved emotionally while you're typing on the net with Christopher. But what told you, I'm going to go meet him? Uh, look, I'm tired of the chatting. Step up to the plate, oh boy. What? What, when was, how did that happen? I thought we had to move forward, mm -hmm. and uh, he seemed to be content with just chatting. And I sent him my phone number, my cell number, and he thought that was really forward. And he didn't call me for weeks and weeks, and finally he did call, and um, he said he was very happy that I had given him my phone number. And um, again, I had to really be the one to initiate things. I think I invited him to go out for uh, coffee or for lunch or something. Mm -hmm. And then after lunch? After lunch, I, I didn't think that, um, I didn't think that I was worthy of him. I didn't think I deserved to have someone as, as nice as him. And so I basically said, well, it was a very nice lunch and bye. And I didn't, I didn't think of pursuing anything. He sent me an email saying that he enjoyed lunch and that he would like to see me again. How long after the first daytime meeting did we jump to a early afternoon or evening? About two months. Two months? Two months. And then that two-month relationship turned into how long? Two years. Two years. Please welcome Christopher to the show. <laughs> Christopher, how are you? You have a seat for a second. You were married, are still married, and going through a divorce, correct? That's right. And, and for whatever reasons found yourself in the exact same position. That's correct. So you go up on the net. We already know how you met. So then you meet. And then for yourself, though, what was that? Was that the first time you had met somebody on the net? Absolutely, yes. So I, I come back to this thought. You're married. You know, um, things are not right. Things are not going good. Why yeah. not just look your wife in the face and say, you know what? I'm done. A lot of people en enter into marriage or into a relationship when they're very young. And, uh, and sometimes they enter into those relationships with an attitude, well, this is as good as it gets and I really can't expect anything more. They've, they've, they're inexperienced, they don't know what to expect out of a relationship. Okay. So they go into relationships that are, for lack of a better word, doomed to failure because mm -hmm. they're not the right relationship for them. Once it started, once you knew the two of you were going to get together, you talked for two months, why not turn around to your spouse and say, ah, done. You got to let me go. Let's battle this thing out in court. It's going to be a battle anyway. Once we get caught, it's going to get caught. You know, so no. why not get it over with before that starts? Uh, you, why, are you why did you stay in the marriage for 10 years? Why did you stay in the marriage for 20 years? Why are you there? Right. It's because there's a cost involved in breaking that relationship up. A you. huge cost. And that cost doesn't go away even after you get caught in an unfaithful relationship. That cost is going to be there. You don't want to pay that cost. But Nobody wants that to cost, pay that cost. It gets exacerbated oh, when the court no kidding. finds out no, absolutely. that you were cheating. No, you're no question you, there. Once you do recognize that you want to be with someone else and you begin the process of divorce, it is a long and tedious process. It's extremely expensive. Oh, you got to tell me I've been through two of them and I've paid my way. Yes, it's financially <laughs> taxing and it's also spiritually um, devastating. And once I decided that Christopher or someone like him was the sort of person I wanted to spend my life with, I did go home and I did say, it's over. Let me tell you something. Infidelity doesn't always wind up breaking up a marriage or destroying a relationship. In some cases, and especially now, there are articles written every other week about this. It seems that women seem to think that infidelity can help strengthen their relationship.